Welcome back to Fire Emblem Heroes. Today we'll be doing a summoning session on the mythic banner for Dagger. Um, our goal will be to get Dagger and Freya, hopefully both, um, and whatever else wants to come home, I guess. Um, um, I'll start by doing a little bit of um, going full circles. Um, and then, depending on what we get, we'll probably have to switch to sniping. I don't really like sniping on legendary banners, but it's probably the only way we're gonna get it. at least get something. So yeah, we're just gonna keep going full circles. Um, so yeah, um, so Dagger is the um, our newest mythic hero. I don't think anybody counted her. Um, Okay, so we got Tana as a four-star upgrade, our free summon. Alright, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, four-star upgrades don't mess with your rate, so not that we had a rate to begin with, but... Uh, yeah, this is a plus speed Tana, so we probably merge it with uh, uh, the one we got for the Fed Pass. Uh, but as I was about to say, like... I don't think anybody was expecting Dagger to show up this early, at least um, as a summonable unit. Usually, like, there's some time passes before we start getting the original characters from that book. So, I was kind of surprised. Um, but I do like um, the way she comes into this game, like the new ability, um, Pathfinder, I believe it's called. That allows you to basically use her whatever she's standing as a free spot that doesn't count against your movement range. Uh, as long as it's a traversable uh, path, you know, like if it's a mountain and, well, she wouldn't be able to stand on a mountain. If it's like a forest style, uh, cavalry will still not be able to cross through it because uh, cavalry can outgrow through the forest tiles. But like infantry will be able to use, uh, go over her. Um, if she was a flyer and she was standing on a mountain, that would prevent infantry armors cavalry from moving and only flyers would be able to utilize that ability. But yeah, it's really cool. It allows some really interesting plays that you would probably not be able, no, not probably, you would definitely not be able to do. We're only getting like one frame per um, that you will not be able to do normally. So it's very interesting. Um, see how people get creative with it. What kind of uh, new AR offense strategies people come up with. Um, so she is a being a light mythic hero, uh, being offense. So her sister will probably end up being a defensive hero with the Pathfinder ability and that's gonna be a lot more scary because we already have like really oppressive defense teams I mean last week for me on Ether Race I, I faced a lot of oppressive teams like nothing but uh, turn one engagements that you couldn't stop because we've been getting a lot of skills that just been very good for defense teams, like, for example, um, Odd Recovery. Yeah, Odd Recovery um, from uh, Christmas uh, Sephiroth. That ability is just extremely powerful. Being able to pretty much, because it's an odd turn, so odd turn means first turn, so you can't, like, being able to remove penalties on your dancers on turn one means you're pretty much pushing out Azura out of uh, Legendary Fion. Nah, Brave Fion. You're pushing out Bra Bridal. Bridal. Man, I just keep saying everything wrong. Pushing out Bridal Fion out of the picture, like completely invalidating uh, what she does, which is allow you to at least have some breathing room, like on turn one, but uh, by having the seven unit end turn. 
and then having a dancer just teleport to them, increasing the range of the entire team, especially like a uh, dancer Sigurd, who being a cavalry has a much higher um, threat range than everybody else, every other dancer in the game, including the herons, because they're still melee, they're still bound by three spaces in one, and they still have to transform. All right, we got our second five stars and another four star upgrade, Ryoma this time. Which is still on the, are we gonna get this encounter refines list. This is a plus defense Ryoma. So yeah, like Dancer Sigurd being uh, able to allow this turn one place just by, with odd recovery. And you would think, okay, but you're actually wasting a lot of turn, like you're wasting your seven slot by having. Well, you're not. You're never gonna waste your seven slot because you need it. That's just a free slot. But whatever you, uh, you're wasting, uh, one unit being a healer with all tempest, you're wasting a dancer with um, having to bring a very specific dancer. But now it's like a lot of this uh, plays just can take over the whole map, like leave you with no place to like even set up your units or try to set up, set up any kind of tactics. And while I don't do it, but if you're someone that runs six buildings uh, on your backline, then that just means you really have no place to move. That just completely shuts you out. So some of these new uh, things are getting defense and then like you could even stack that with more things like, for example, uh, the save skills, far save, near save. Okay, we got Mar a Freya. This is one of the units I didn't really need the most. Uh, I guess B minus HP or neutral. Plus HP minus defense. Uh, I guess that's kind of neutral. Um... But yeah, like these save skills, like they can even prevent you from like, okay, so I can't let this team initiate. I have to initiate on them, but then you have this save unit right there that is going to prevent you from even initiating a player phase. So um, a lot of these new skills that we've been getting have been more favorable to defense than anything else. And it can really make uh, ether raids a pain in the A. It was very annoying to even try it. Uh, to play, just like it leaves you with no answer. Like, okay, so it leaves you with, okay, so how do, can I minimize the losses? Like, how can I at least walk away with one loss instead of like, how can I win this match? And like, not every, like, even. Um, a team like that has weaknesses, like every team has weaknesses, it just depends whether you have the tools at that moment to counter that very specific thing. So uh, in a way it's good that Dagger is an offense hero because that allows something to, for you, a strategy new to use on offense, rather than a lot of these defense oriented uh, skills that we've been getting. But we know that um, her sister is most likely going to come with the ability as well. And it will be a very... It will just um, allow the same kind of strategies. Like, for example, you can make her the seven unit. And whatever unit is behind them automatically uh, can just go through her, increasing the range. And that if that unit is a cavalry unit, a uh, range cavalry, then that... It literally is that cavalry unit being the same as if they were a frontline unit. Or uh, an odd tempest uh, flyer, uh, an odd tempest range flyer, which just literally be a cavalry unit, would allow you to use, like, for example, the desert map, that middle spot that usually is safe for the defense to put a unit in. 
when I say save, that's quote unquote save because like rally traps can increase range and make that uh, space available to be attacked. But for the most part, that's like the one spot you know that you'll be safe. But if you put a odd tempest range uh, flyer, then they can just go straight through it. Or you can protect a, a unit from someone trying to go into a hit and run by putting uh, that's the unit with Pathfinder on the front and having the uh, unit behind them be the real threat. So things like that are possible. Like, and yeah, so there's a lot of like they're giving counterplay for defense, but they're not giving you like counterplay on offense to play it. So, for example, like the the duo buildings, they're they're supposed to counterplay each other. Like one is supposed to counter the other, but it favors defense, as in the uh, well, the defense team is never going to be able to use their duo heroes dual ability because AI doesn't is not allowed to use that the dual skills. Or even if they could use it, they probably wouldn't be able to use it optimally. Like, if you out of battle, you'll never see your units use it. Uh, so that... Um, but what I mean is, like... No matter how many times... A, a level 1... Um, dual hindrance can s literally stop a level... A max level dual indulgence. Just because you are preventing them from being able to use that skill. So... I think a better way to have balanced it out would be like uh, to counter each other, like a level one counters a level one, level two counters a level two, and so on and so forth. That would probably make it a little more uh, even balance, like force people to, okay, if this is really the strategy I want to take. I'm going to have to build this tower as high as possible to counter uh, offense teams doing, okay, if I really want to use the strategy, I have to build this tower as high as possible. I think that would have been a better counterplay for it, like a better way to go about it for both players. Um, give, make it a little more even, I guess I could say. Even like, um, I don't use dual heroes on offense um, to this day. I mean, um, depend if we get a really good one and I get it. Like to this day, I think the only one that I have that is a dual hero is that I summon is Ephraim, dual Ephraim, and of course that we all got the du free dual lane, so that one I also have, plus I summon two extra ones, so yeah, in a way I do have dual lane and dual Ephraim, but dual lane is really not that good on defense, and you can make use of dual Ephraim on offense, but it requires like very specific gale force stats in order to maximize his utility. Uh, so like I personally don't use those uh, strats like I don't put a dual hero on defense I don't use a dual hero on offense so I have yeah I have not even built a uh, dual hindrance or dual indulgence at all because I don't use them and they're not in the rotation either so there's no point for me to build them if I'm not gonna use them I mostly focus on healing tower uh, panic room all right, so we gotta finally like this took forever to get in second uh, five star. Well, second focus five star. So I already have my plus speed core, and I think that's optimal IBs. And I had a plus attack, and I decided to go with a plus speed. So uh, this one is just getting merged. There's no point in me fodering her off he, when I actually use legendary coring a lot. But we, yeah, it's not been a very good summoning session. Like we haven't gotten a lot of units, even going full circle. Like full circle is supposed to be optimal in you just want to get units, but we are not getting a lot of them, and we're not even getting that many green uh, orbs. So sniping will probably be very bad. Like look at here, not a single green orb. Mostly we've been getting one green ore per pack, uh, per circle, so it's 
see, not getting this green orb, so there's really zero point in sniping. Uh, but yeah, moving on, so... I think some rebalances need to come to AR. I think one of the best ones would be like to desync the seasons, uh, make offense, like light on defense, Astra on offense, light versus Astra, Anima versus dark. So like just rotate them the same way like there's a major season and a minor season on um, Mjolnir Strike. Like, is it Mjolnir Strike? Yeah, it's Mjolnir Strike. So, you have your major season, uh, the one that gives you a little more bonuses for those units, and the minor season. And in order to use the seven slot, you have to use the major season uh, bonus heroes for it. Uh, so, yeah, something like that. Like, this thing, the seasons just uh, move them around. Like, you can use your dark heroes on offense, your. Uh, light heroes on defense. I mean, you can use, you can do that, use them, but I mean, like for optimal scoring. And that should at least change some of the dynamics of iterates. I think it will fix some of the problems that we're getting. Like, again, like getting a lot of skills that are extremely valuable for defense uh, that have no counterplay. Like, Odd Tempest is. The, it has no counterplay only other than it only works on all turns. Uh, but it really just that's it. That's like the only counterplay. At least like uh, the other skill that works like that, which is uh, Kia Staff, that at least only works on the lowest HP or the lowest units HP that has a debuff. So it has a very specific. Um, Uh, what you call it? Condition. It has a very specific condition that you have to meet. Um, so if I could enable turn one plays, uh, there is counterplay. Like okay, first the opponent, whoever's building the defense team, they have to choose. Okay, do I want to do a HP stacking? So making sure all the units have the same amount of HP in order to maximize the gains, but then you're giving those units possibly suboptimal skills like HP plus 3, HP plus 4, HP plus 5, HP. So you're sacrificing a possible A stat or CO in order for you to maximize your gains. So, and on the, and if you're not doing that, then the enemy has the ability to like, for example, Target a debuff at a specific unit if you if you have something like uh, Plumeria on offense, uh, which she debuffs whatever is the closest to four spaces from whatever you're dancing. So you can target a debuff uh, to break the play. So there that means there is counterplay for it. But for even Tempest, there's just no counterplay on it. You cannot stop it on turn one. So. In a way, I don't think it was a good idea to for it to be to work against isolation. Isolation is very powerful; like it's able to stop um, a dancer from dancing or a rally tramp from initiating. is extremely powerful, but it also requires you as a player to HP stack a unit for it. So you have to HP stack uh, Barafion in order to maximize the number of units that she is going to be able to um, be effective against. So the counterplay for defense is just to HP stack your own units. Like we used to see a lot of uh, Sylvia. Sylvia I think is yeah dancer with over 70 plus HP or you see Ninian a lot with a lot of HP. So that's counterplay. In, but for all Tempest, there really is no counterplay. Like it's just it activates on turn one, and it activates turn one plays that you really don't have a way to counter. Other than like possibly predicting AI and making sure your units are in the 
in a spot that uh, will not be activated once a movie uh, unit moves, which can be difficult uh, based on map layouts or um, buildings that you have and stuff like that. So it's not guaranteed for you to be able to have the ability to do it, but especially you have to bring uh, three buildings guaranteed every season. All right, we got Edelgard this time. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to get a dagger, which is bad because I won't be able to use her on bonus weeks. This is a plus rest minus attack. I'm currently running a plus speed Edelgard. And I like using plus speed Edelgard just because sometimes she's able to break through uh, slower units. But this is, what, only three units, right? I think it's, I spent over 200 orbs and I only got in three heroes. Uh, Corin, Edelgar, and Freya, which two of them are green, surprisingly, even though not a lot of green orbs have shown up. Um, yeah. So I just wish they give us a little more counterplay um, on offense. Um, maybe a new building. Uh, one thing that could help uh, fight some of the strats that we see on defense would be like a building that uh, similar to like the way tactics room works. Uh, but maybe not. Maybe like a similar range uh, as Panic Manor. You know. Center uh, three spaces center on the unit that disables all um, order sub skills. So air orders, ground orders, anything like that. Any unit on those would be uh, uh, those skills would be will not be able to activate. And maybe in like it could be by rank, like level one only stops it on turn one or. Uh, level two, uh, level two only stops it to get stopped up to turn two, so on and so forth. Or you can make it uh, HP base like all the other buildings. Like uh, level one will only be able to stop. I think level ones are usually forty five. Uh, level two fifty and so on and so forth, and make it um, immune to uh, like. It make a counter like all tempest like um, these debuffs cannot be cleared by all tempest or Kia stuff or something like that you know like give um, a counterplay to the try to give some counterplay to stuff that activates on turn one like the counterplay like originally like the way uh, Etheris was designed was the counterplay is that the enemy unit will not move until you enter the threat range. But ever since the beginning, uh, restore traps have been a thing, so restore traps have always increased the uh, range. Oh, and but that's why we got someone like Brother Fjorn to okay, you have this one unit that you can use to counter this specific strategy now you don't have to bring this unit on every team but you are allowed to bring this one unit to counter this type of strategy but then they release a unit that completely counters that uh counters your counter strategy and completely shuts it down like now brother fion can't do anything like if there's no tempest user on the field so i I don't know, I guess a way would have been like, uh, like Kia stuff, make it work like Kia stuff, like only affect one unit with the lowest whatever, or one unit that's debuff or whatever. But making it everything with two spaces, just literally everything with two spaces. I think that was a little overtuned for what it was supposed to do, which give you a way to avoid Bride of Yorn slash Mela. But I'm mostly mo focusing on Astra because right now uh, that's where you'll see it more on Astra season. Because that's the only place we have a 7 unit to be able to do this right now. Once 
the seven unit becomes available on dark season then of course we'll start seeing that strategy used a lot more in uh darks in dark teams as well so I, know, I just think that this should be a little more counterplay for you to be able to at least have a chance to set up your units and again this piles up on top of the save skills that can just the way you can you can build your team to have a unit uh with save skills so that prevents even the player okay i'm gonna try to snipe this unit on turn one so i can stop uh, a rally i can stop a dance i can do something about it but you uh, then you're not even able to initiate on that enemy if there's a save unit near it because you'll attack and even if you kill the unit with a save skill you still didn't kill your target so yeah um i just think that those kind of strategies are a little there needs to be counterplay for everything like you need to be able to have a chance to go against the enemy and do something i think this is the first emerin i got in since i plus 10 her I believe this is the first Emerin I got since I plus 10 my Emerin. So let me mark it like this just so I can see. All right, this is the last green orb. So this is pretty much as far as we'll go for now. And this is a three star. Not even, it's a five star. Okay, at least we don't live with any kind of Peter Raid right now. So I think this makes my Edelgar plus three or plus four i got two other guards so this one's a neutral one all right so let's take a look at what we got oh. all right so we got one other guard two other guards one corin one freya so we got four units out of almost 300 orbs. Mm, I don't think that's very good. I mean, we did get two, four to five star upgrades, but I don't count them in it because those you either get them or you don't. You, there's no control. You don't have any control over where you get them or you don't. Uh, so let's see how many merges I have on my Edelgar. So she was plus one, so she's about to become plus three. As for Corin, she was plus three, so she's now gonna be plus four. And of course, Freya is my first Freya, so uh, we just got one Freya. Um, so I really wanted her to have one. Choose your legends. Uh, yeah, choose your legends. So you, not choose your legends, I hear rises. Uh, in order for us to get a free one, I think would have been better than the uh, Corin we got. I mean the uh, dual limb we got, which is right here. This is the free one, and this is the two that I summon on the uh, on the actual banner, trying to get uh, merges for my zeros. Well, trying to get one zeros, and I ended up with four zeros, so I, I managed to get her plus three. I already have one, so. I gave, uh, I gave a uh, Dragon Ball for those who just watched the summoning videos. <clears throat> I gave Dragon Ball to where are you? Should be you should be somewhere down here. Oh. No, that's HP HP. There you go. I gave it to Sotis Dragon Ball. Um, yep, yeah. um, so Odd Tempest is also an ability that it, it just piles up on those, like I said, like, uh, turn one engagements make them easier to activate with Odd Tempest or seven unit rally traps, seven unit restore traps, like, um, Resort tra um, like return traps and um, what is it? Return and what's the other skill? 
uh, rescue, return rescue uh, does um, are a little harder for you to try to pull off uh, because they require you to be damaged. Now, if you have like Winter Bernadetta, she can activate that by doing damage to one, but I still think these are, um, they're still counterplay because again, you can still isolate those units as long as they don't have like, um, or Tempest. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the rant for today uh, on today's summoning video. Uh, kind of sad that he wasn't able to get Dagger. I don't know. Um, I'll see if I can farm some orbs and try to go back into this banner. Uh, so I can at least uh, try to get her again. But I don't know. I might have to like snipe green. But we saw how many green orbs we got. It was very difficult to even try to snipe green. Even though... Even though I say that when uh, three out of the four mid, uh, units that I got were green orbs, so I don't know, it's just the way things work out. Uh, but yeah, so with all that being said, um, I thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye.